All right, let's begin the second half of today's class. This is going to be uh, CS 2050. And the topic is on set operations. You can combine sets according to certain laws similar to the way you can combine numbers in arithmetic. The product of two numbers, the sum of two numbers. You can multiply numbers, add numbers, even divide numbers, and you can get a number back out. You, given two sets, you can multiply, not multiply them, but there's certain set specific operations we'll talk about, which given two sets, you, you can union them, intersection them, complement them, and you'll get a set back out. So let's talk about some of these uh, basic set operations. For A, B, any sets, we write A, and then we use this big U to mean union. And this is written as A union B to be equal to the set of elements that are in the universe of discourse, such that x is an element of A, or x is an element of B. In some sense, the union is like a logical or of two sets. x is in A, or x is in B. We usually will describe these with a Venn diagram. Now, a Venn diagram is not a proof. Proof by Venn diagram is not a proof, but uh, we can draw it this way. This is uh, a Venn diagram. You draw an outer box to specify the universe of discourse. Right? The whole box is a universe of discourse. A represents a circle of the elements uh, in A. B represents a circle of the elements of B. A, the overlapping here part is things that are in A and things that are in B. If we were to try to shade in the region that represents A union B, it would look like this. So that we would consider the, the shaded region here, we would call uh, A union B, and that's the set of elements that are in A and the set of elements that are in B, right? Um, consider the two sets, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's say we union this with uh, 1, 5, 7, 8. What should we get? What is the union of these two sets? All of them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Notice that we don't have 6 in either set. Uh, so trick question. And we also, 1 is appearing twice in both sets, and it doesn't appear twice in the union. If an element is, appears twice in both sets, you don't count it twice. You just count it once. Right. Um, what is the union of the naturals? Uh, with the integers. Just integers? Yeah. If you say A is a natural or A is an integer, it's kind of redundant because every natural or integer is simply an integer. In general, if A is a subset of B, then A union B is equal to what? What, if A and B are finite, what is the cardinality of A union B in terms of A and B? Is, is A a subset of B? Not necessarily. Let A be any, any sets. What is, the what is the number of elements in A union B? Again, the union is a combination of both. Instead of an equality, I'll ask for an upper bound. Give me an upper bound on the size of the union of two sets. Cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B. Yeah. In the worst case, it's both of them. If they overlap, it's less than that. But in the worst case, it's both, right? Here, A was overlapping, so we don't count that twice. It's called inclusion-exclusion. We'll talk about this later next time. Um, what is the union of the rationals and the irrationals? Rules. 
of reals. Every number is, in fact, every number that is real is rational or irrational. Exactly those. Um, right. This is the union operation. You take two sets, you union them together, you combine them, ignoring duplicates. Let's do the next set operation, the next atomic one, is the intersection. We say A intersect B, and this is read as the intersection. is equal to X is some element of the universe of discourse, and X is an element of A, and X is an element of B. It's in both. Where we draw the Venn diagram for this, it would look like this. Again, we have the universe of discourse. We have A, we have B. X is an A, X is in B means X is this little football shape sliver here. That's the intersection of A and B, right? It's not both, it's not either, but it's both. That's what we mean by the intersection. All right, what is the intersection of the, our two sets previously? One comma two comma three comma four intersection with one comma five comma seven comma eight. The intersection of two sets is a set. A set of one. Set of one, yeah. One is in both, and in fact, it's the only number in both. What is um, the intersection of the real numbers and the rational numbers? The rationals number. Every, every rational is real. In general, uh, if A is a subset of B, then what is uh, then what is A intersect B? A. A, yeah. Everything that's in A is a subset of B. So everything that's if A, all that's in A intersect B is just A, right? If you think of a Venn diagram, B. A, this is a subset, you just shade in the intersection, and that, oh, that's, okay, well, that's all of A, so easy. Um, what about the rationals intersect with the irrationals? No. Yeah, it's the empty set, the null set. If A and B are said to be disjoint, they share no elements. The, the intersection of two sets that are disjoint is empty. A set, we can draw it as disjoint if we draw it like that. There's nothing in the middle. There's no overlap, right? So the intersection of two uh, disjoint sets is empty, right? What do we think is the cardinality of A uh, intersect B in terms of uh, A and B, the cardinalities of A and B? Minus cardinality B. What if the cardinality? What if B is a hundred and A is size two? You can't have a negative cardinality. The absolute value. Then. The absolute value. What if A is size one hundred and B is size ninety nine, but they're disjoint? That might be an, a correct upper bound, but it's not the one I'm thinking of. I, I'll need a second to think about that one. If it's if it's the absolute value of B minus A. Here's what I have. Uh, the minimum of the cardinality of A or the cardinality of B. If X is in A or and X is in B, if it's in both of them, it's definitely in one of them. It's all, it, it, in the worst case, it's all the elements in one or the other, right? So it has to be less than the, than the, than the smaller of the two. The intersection, in general, will create a smaller set, right? This, you can think of this little shaded region is definitely smaller than all of A or all of B. It could, in the worst case, be A. It could, in the worst case, be B. It has to be the smaller than of the smallest of those two. Right. All right, let's do the complement. The complement of a set, you denote as a bar. It's a unary operation, and we denote that x is in a... Uh, very clear. X is in the universe of discourse. 
if x is not an element of a. Right? So it's exactly the elements that are not in A. Uh, Venn diagram. That's A complement. It's the exact opposite of something that's in A. What is, for example, and implicitly, the universe of discourse sometimes is implicit. It's not usually said out loud. So it depends on what it is. For example, what is the complement of the rational numbers? The irrational numbers. What is the universe of discourse that complement is taken with respect to? Yeah. You're taking it with respect to a different universe of discourse, like the complex numbers or something weird. The complement would be anything that's not a rational real. It's either a complex number or and irrational, something like this, right? It can get kind of weird. Usually, the universe of discourse is well specified. Um, uh, if this, the universe of discourse is the naturals, what is the complement of the set uh, 2, 3, 4? Yeah, so it's going to be 0, 1, union, not, we're skipping 2, 3, and 4, 5, comma, 6. Right. The universe of discourse is infinite. The complement of a finite set is then the rest of the elements. So it's an infinite set. Right. What about um, uh, the complement of the complement of a set? What do we think that is? Yeah, we think that's itself. Let's kind of prove it. Uh, the complement of the complement is going to be x is in the universe of discourse. Such that x is not an element of the complement. Right? But notice that x is an element of the complement, is not an element of the complement, if and only if x is an element of A. Right? By law of double negation. Um, so, again, just to be sure, we say x is not an element of s to mean equivalently not x is an element of s. Right? So, then we can replace this by x is an element of the universe of discourse such that x is an element of a, and that implies that. Uh, X must be some elements of A in the universe of discourse. So this is simply A. Right. So complement, complement is simply A. Um, excellent. Questions so far? You know how to take the complement of a set? Sometimes you may see this written as, uh, instead of A to the complement, you may see written this written as A with a little C. Rare, you'll see that, but sometimes you may. Questions on these three basic operations. These are really the fundamental operations. Like we have and, or, and not for propositional logic. We have intersection, union, and complement. The complement is kind of like the negation. The union is kind of like the or. And the intersection is kind of like the and. And you can combine sets using these three primitive operations the same way you can combine predicates and propositions using the three basic operations. Right. There are some other set theoretic operations we can talk about. Set difference. Like a subtraction, we say a, and then we use backslash b, a set minus to mean x is some element of the universe of discourse, x is an element of a, and x is not an element of b. This one's a slightly more advanced. If this is the universe of discourse, and this is b, and this is a, we mean the elements that are in a and not in b. So it looks like this. It's a moon with a bite in it. That's what you should think when you think of a set minus. It's the elements in A, but not in B. Now, in fact, you can prove that this is equivalent to A intersect B complement. A proof by Venn diagram is not a proof, but you can kind of 
think about how it would look like, like a proof. What you do is you would take, this is what A intersect B, A, A minus B is. A intersect B complement would be you take the picture of A, and then you and that with the picture of B complement. So that's B complement. Right? And then when you intersect those, you're going to be missing a little slice of the moon there. right? Maybe I'll make that a little more moon-like. You'll be missing a slice of the moon there. So when you intersect those two, you'll get uh, like that. Now, you can prove two sets to be equal using uh, a double set containment as well. We'll talk about the laws of thought uh, later today, but you could prove um, these to be equal using a double set containment. So we're going to prove uh, that A minus B is a subset of A intersect B complement, and that A intersect B complement is a subset of A minus B. If you could uh, convince yourself, if you can show those two things, then the two sets must be equal, right? How would we show those two things? Let x be an element of a minus b. Uh, then x is in an a, and x is not in b. Uh, then x is in a, and x is an element of b complement. So x is an element of... Uh, a intersect B complement. That's the first part done. Let's do the second part. Let X be an element of A intersect B complement. Then X is an element of A, and X is an element of B complement. So X is an element of A, and X is not an element of B. So x is an element of a uh, minus b. Most double set containments you do will never be that easy. But uh, when, we do the, when we're in the introductory set theory lecture, things become uh, a, a little trivial. Right. Did a double set containment kind of followed maybe a little too obviously from the definitions of things. But that's the way it, 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 it falls. Questions on this proof? All right, what is um, the integers subtract the naturals? Yeah. Is zero in this set? Why not? Zero is natural. natural, so it's everything in A, not in B. And zero's in here, so it's not in there. What about uh, the rationals? I mean, excuse me, the real numbers subtracted the rationals. Rational. Irrationals. In general, by the way, uh, the complement of, remember we said the complement of the irrationals, the complement of the rationals was the irrationals. So we could say that R minus Q is equal to R intersect Q complement. Q complement is just the irrationals. So we get R intersect the irrationals. But we know that the irrationals are a subset of R. So this is just the irrationals. Let's do one more uh, interesting law, and then we'll get on to uh, one, one more interesting equivalence. Let's do We'll do A, uh, this is called the symmetric difference. It's either written A X or B or A triangle B. 
This is called the symmetric difference. Uh, this is read as x is an element of the universe of discourse. x is an A. Uh, or x is in B. Uh, but not both. Now, if I wanted to use set symbol, set theory, to write the words, but not both, how would I write that using set theory? Belongs to A, union B minus A, uh, intersect B. That's exactly what the way the way to write this. The way I would write, but not both, is I would just say X is not an element of A intersect B. Right. There are many other equivalent ways to write this. Would you believe that this is also A minus B? Union B minus A. Proof, we don't we could do it with the double set containment. I'm just going to describe it with a Venn diagram. That's the universe of discourse. This is A, this is B. That's A intersect B. So the way I would draw the symmetric difference of A and B is going to look like this. Ta -da. It's A or B, but not both. So it's A intersect B, A union B. Uh, subtracted A intersect B. A union B minus A intersect B, right? Excellent, excellent. Um, let's go through certain, you may notice that as we did the proof, it's, we did it kind of mechanically, but it's as if we could have, we could have done that really with, uh, if we had a set of laws of thought, we could have done it the same way, right? Now there do exist a set of identities for set theory, but when you do a proof involving set theory, you should not apply the, these identities. You should rather just do a double set containment because it's really rare in practice these identities are going to be useful. Unlike in propositional calculus where you can apply the identities and it's super useful, here you can't really, it's not useful. And like, like any problem you could be given in the wild, you, you're not going to be able to apply these things. It's not going to work. But let's go through the identities anyway just as a good practice, just to see what, what, they're, what, they're, true, what they're true is. Um, So what is uh, A intersect omega, where omega is the universe of discourse? A. Uh, naturally, A is a subset of omega, because A is the, uh, omega is the universe of discourse. Now, what about uh, A union, the empty set? What is that? A. Yeah, it's also A. You take all the elements in here, combine them with all the elements in here. There's nothing to, for this to contribute. In fact, the empty set kind of acts like a zero with respect to uh, the union. And think about how A Cartesian product zero is going to be zero. Uh, the empty set, excuse me, A Cartesian product empty set is empty set, but A union empty set is A. So that's kind of similar to A times zero is equal to zero but a plus zero is equal to a, right? So you kind of get the same laws of arithmetic out, almost, not exactly. You get kind of the same laws of arithmetic out as you get for set theory. So we're getting closer to something that looks like a number using collections. Uh, a union empty set is simply a as well. These are called identity. These are the laws of identity. And again, you can't cite these laws, but it's cool to know what they're called. What about um, a union? Uh, the universe of discourse, what is that? The universe of discourse. What about uh, A intersect the empty set? What is A intersect the empty set? The empty set, the empty set contains no elements. The intersection is, is all elements that are in both. There are no elements in this, so there are no elements in the whole thing. These are called domination laws. Okay, what about A union A? A, yeah. Some of these are trivial. A intersect A. 
These are called idempotency. Um, what is uh, A complement complement? Yeah, this is called complementation. It follows exactly from double negation, right? You could prove double negate. You could prove this is true using the axiom of double negation. Um, uh, a union B is equal, turns out to be union A, and you get uh, A intersect B is equal to B intersect A. What are these laws called? You may see, have seen these for natural numbers, for numbers in general. This is not a serious question, it's a trivia question. What are these laws called? Communitivity. Here's another one. A union B union C is equal to A union B union C. And similarly, A intersect B intersect C is equal to A intersect B. That whole thing intersect with C. Um, what, are the, what are the name of these laws? Associativity. Okay, what do we think A union B intersect C is equal to? A union B intersect A union C? Yeah. We get a distributive law the same way we get one for arithmetic. Similarly, we get A intersect uh, B uh, union C is equal to A union B, excuse me, A intersect B, union A intersect C. Now, you should prove these all using a double set containment. We'll prove only one of them just uh, to be sparse, but you could perhaps believe these. And these are called distributive laws, right? Trick question. A union B complement. What do we think that's equal to? Complement of A intersect complement B. Yeah. What's the name of this law? De, De Morgan's law. Let me write the other one out. All right, this one we're going to prove by double set containment. It's, uh, it falls a little too e easily. But here's the way to think of this. If you have A union B complement, okay, and you, let's, you want to complement this, the way to think about this, if you complement this, the way to think about this is that this is like a Tetris piece, and it's falling on top of the set, and then it breaks up into three pieces like this, like that. And then those stay the same, and then you flip that one. Okay? So it breaker bars up, right? Now let's say you want to do the complement of that. Let's say you want to do A complement, intersect B complement, complement. Okay? Visually, think of it as it breaks up into three pieces again. Right? Those, uh, A complement complement is going to be what? A. The complement of the intersection is going to be the union. You flip the symbol whenever you put a bar on it. And then B complement complement is just B, right? Think of like double negation as the two bars are falling and then they collapse and then they do the little tetris noise and then they cancel each other out, right? 
That's the way to think of it. And then, but when the bar falls on, this, on the union or the intersection symbol, it flips over. This should be true because this is this complemented twice, right? Same thing. Right? Now, let's prove, uh, using De Morgan's law, we'll prove a double set containment. We prove that A union B complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. Let uh, X be an element of A uh, union B whole thing complemented. Then X is not an element of A union B. Do you agree? Go each step. If A is an element of A union B complement, A is not an element of A union B. Then we know that X is not an element of A and X is not an element of B. So X is an element of A complement and X is an element of B complement. So X is an element of A complement intersect B complement. Since this is true for any X in A union B complement, that that X is also an A complement intersect B complement, we get then that A union B complement is a subset of A complement intersect B complement. And the first set containment is done. Let's do the second set containment. Again, I think this is a little pedantic. It's good exercise, though, to see what a double set containment looks like repeatedly. In fact, the reverse double set containment, as you can expect, is going to follow almost identically in reverse. That's not always true, though. It's just the faculty of the fact that we have such a simple problem we're doing this early. Uh, let uh, x, and we'll pr we're proving the reverse, let x be an element of uh, a intersect a complement intersect B complement. Then X is an element of A complement and X is an element of B complement by definition of the intersection. So X is not an element of A and X is not an element of B. Then X is not an element of A union B. So then X must be an element of A union B complement. Since this is for all X in A complement intersect B complement, we get that A complement intersect B complement is a subset of A union B complement. We've proven one is a subset of the other so that they must be equal, QED. Right? That's what a double set containment is supposed to look like. Proven to Morgan's law. Any questions on that, on the double set containment, the syntax, the proof? Sort of follows correctly, obviously, from the definitions we gave. All right, we have two more groups of laws to do, and then I think we're, we're done. Well, let's do, uh, what do we think uh, A union uh, A intersect B is equal to? A yeah. Wow, everyone got it at the same time. Why? Kind of, let's think about it. A intersect B is going to be a subset of A, and also a subset of B by definition, but it's a subset of A. So you have A union some subset of A. So that's just going to be A, right? Um, what about A intersect uh, A union B? A. That's also going to be A. A union B is going to be something bigger, but then you're intersecting it back with A itself. So it's going to be go back smaller. And again, you could prove this using distributive laws. You prove it using double set containment. But these are called the absorption laws. No need. You won't be able to cite, when proving equivalence of two sets, you won't be able to cite you know, an, a, a law of thought this way. But it's good to know what they're called. right? It follows, it's almost identical to the laws of thought we gave for propositional calculus. We gave absorption laws to the propositional calculus. Uh, final. Sets A union A complement is what? 
ah, in propositional logic, if we did, in propositional logic, if we did P or P in the negation of P, we would have said that this is a tautology. But as a set, what is a union a complement? The universe. the universe of discourse. Why? Every element is either in A. What about the elements that are not in A? Those are in A complement. So everything is either in or not in A complement. Everything either is a sheep or isn't a sheep, right? That's true for everything, no matter what the set A is defined to be. You can dichotomize all the, every, the universe of objects of anything. Everything either is or isn't whatever you specify. Similarly, what is A intersect A complement? Yeah, nothing is both something and not that thing. Nothing is both a sheep and not a sheep. Right? These are called the complement laws. They are analogous to the tautology and contradiction laws that we gave. Again, law is not too important, but we, I just wanted to write down each law just so we can say it out loud and talk through them, see what's going on. All right, that's all I have for you. I will have to see you guys next time.